we were shouting out the likes of Yike and Aika in the last game as potentially the best mid jungle in, in ERLs. But Ruby and Lurix are potentially another one of those contenders as Jizuke and Maxlaw, however, will lock in a very deadly mid jungle duo yes. of their own. Well, put it this way, you don't need an analyst and great man's of support network to tell that the unicorns play through their mid jungle. Oh no. And if you're playing Ari Vi, good luck playing mid jungle through that. These champions just find a target and snap. Season to say, Spirit Rush on top of them, they just end up popping. So, we picked in Ruby's Azir, and Ruby is an insane Azir player, but this is a very difficult situation to play this in. I think Giants, they're looking to shut down some of the primary carries of this Prime League team. That they are Sejuani being locked in here for the Antonio to do what he can do. Uh, with that one, it is a standard for him, and we'll see whether he continues to play. Honestly, this was something that when we were chatting to some of those analysts we mentioned earlier, they were sort of saying, look, both teams kind of play in a similar format. Generally, yes. leave a weak side top laner and then play through the mid jungle and rotate that into strong bot side carries. Kadui and Advien arguably the most consistent part of Giants and very strong players in their own right. And you can see here already you've got the Aphelios and the Tom Kench to maybe survive that RE Vi. Um, but we'll see whether they can actually make it work. And what the plans are into this second half, we're still waiting on a top laner for Unicorns. That's more importantly, something like a jungler for Lurox on the other side. Yeah, well, actually, speaking of Max Law and uh, Lurox, of course, very important to their teams as well. I think of Lurox as someone that does team up with Ruby mm. very, very well. And now you see that the Poppy is banned away. Of course, you can do the weird, like, Azir wall into Poppy combination. It's a little bit harder to set up than some terrain instead of, like, throwing up a Trundle Pillar and then... Um, doing whatever with that, but still, blinding away the poppy, it's been one of our meta champions. On the other side, uh, Kedui, not going to be able to uh, get some of the premier team fight AD carries. And this AD carry as well, one of the real great AD carries in terms of the ERL scene, mm -hmm. was carrying uh, Berlin International Gaming. Two great success in spring as well, back when they were in the front. Now they get to do this with the Super League team, Giants. And the uh, question is, who are you saving pick for here? I assume mm -hmm. that you're picking your AD carry now, and. I'm wondering where you're going to pick at this point. They're picking Ooh. towards more of a kill lane, and it's going to be potential support counter pick lands. See what Advin has in his back pocket. Of course, not the easiest necessarily to kill a Tom Kench and an Aphelios if they're playing the lane right, but Giants have certainly drafted the tools yeah. to make sure the dives can come off. Scarface debating a Renekton pick, which has, again, risen in priority as the years gone on as the chat patches have changed back into being a more prominent option with things like the Blade of the Rune King and the Sunfire as a combo of items that have been so deadly at that two item mark and are now waiting for that jungle option. I wonder if it's been left this late, but there's something a little bit spicy Lurox is debating. I'd hope so. That'll be really fun. I mean, you see that the Wukong and the Poppy are bound away, but not a huge amount else, but they're mm. really ticking down the clock. What's going to fix the composition for okay. them? So Juani on the other side, uh, Trundle is a very strong pick in regards to that. Also very good at uh, disengaging certain champions. Not great at disengaging so, such high mobility from Giants, but uh, being able to knock the Tristana out of the rocket jump, obviously very important against that one. And now support counter pick coming in last. Uh, Albion uh, player that was, of course, on Excel in the LEC, even as early as this spring, left to choose their weapon. Weapon of choice for this game. They're choosing the Rakan. Now, I really like Rakan into Time Kench. Rakan and Callista both have really good identity against Time Kench, even in the laning phase, because what Time Kench does is he just doesn't take a lot of damage, but he can't really get out of the, the active area of, do, of, of being damaged, right? He's often hmm. waddling away from that active DPS zone and then putting on the thick skin. With Tristana, you get that bomb put onto you, and Rakan just keeps you in the same place for such a long time, particularly when you can uh, get that ult into that W combo at that level six. Even Tom Kench has to sit around for an amount of time, which he really doesn't enjoy. But Tristana can whittle them down in that area of time. So I think this 2v2 from Kedri and Avian does have significant kill pressure, even onto someone who is a bit harder to kill like that Tom Kench. See whether they can make it work. And Giants, again, something that Noah was saying is, look, if Jizuke can get out of lane and start playing towards those side lanes, 80% chance the game is doomed for their opponents. He's so good at making those side lane plays and playing around the side lane point of view as we head onto the rift here, I believe. Um, we are just kind of waiting to see whether Jizuke and Maxor can really dominate from that mid jungle duo that they have drafted to do. It's something that has kind of fallen by the wayside as the splits and the, the patches have gone on. Yeah, um, really hope that you weren't seeing what we were seeing. Yeah, that was a little we bit. Got a bit of, uh, we, we got a bit of a sneak preview of what was happening on the Rift, and the observers were flicking between like 14 different cameras. It's because it was like um, 
It's like a. I'm not. Wait, who's who's the director that has a load of really hot cuts? Uh, Mark Bay. movie buff. Okay, it was a Michael Bay movie for a brief second. Maybe right. we'll have some of those explosions later on. Yeah, what, what it is is they they were listening back to you know turn on the lights again. They, they got the Swedish House Mafia. They they've got they've got everything going on there. And they've Very got, good. You know, Fred again has decided. You know what? This is how we make this a banger. They're just jamming out in the background and get it all going on. It was, it was great fun for us. Uh, but we are on to the rift. We are waiting to see whether we have anything particularly spicy here to keep our eyes on. Those runes all seem pretty standard. Do keep an eye on the Heal of Blades, though, on the Tristana. It's with some tech for the mid lane back in the day, and you can start trading really aggro with it. Well, what it means is, so you used to have to get to a point in um, Tristana's build where you had a certain amount of attack speed to fully proc your bomb. With Hail of Blades, you get that right from level one, which is why you have such high kill pressure. Uh, of course, that stack stacks up throughout the game as well. And uh, once you get to level six and you land a jump on someone and you hit them with your buster shot, that bomb will do something like 250 percent extra damage. I can't Oof. remember the exact scaling on in terms of uh, in terms of the day, in terms of the actual attack damage scaling on it, but it's absolutely nuts. And I understand why one of these tanks would really not want to be in that comp uh, that that position. Um, but you're not going to have ourselves any interesting level ones in the way that giants sometimes bring to bear. I'm going to be straight into a standard laning phase and uh, see where the action starts first. Indeed we will. Doesn't seem to be anything too spicy right now. Both junglers starting on the bottom side of the map, passing towards the top. Uh, but aside from that, nothing too exciting to talk about as yet. No, really interesting seeing what's going to happen in this 2v2 eventually though, because I think there is, like, like we said, there is kill pressure at a certain point, particularly level 2 and get that jump. Uh, activated for that Tristana, one of the ways you can get extra damage onto your uh, bomb pop. And uh, with that in mind, let's see what happens with the wave control in bot side. See if Kedri and Avian can get themselves an extended run down the lane. And now, um, trying to see what that priority works. So you're expecting the Ari and the Azir to kind of trade priority at different points. They can both find ways to push each other in, depending on how uh, well they are trading. Ari tends to threaten a lot of damage very early on with a point and click uh, W kind of, you auto attack them. And then if you W, then your W Fox Fives will go towards the target, which you ended up uh, auto attacking. Is that Azir sometimes has to back off, but Azir, of course, with their sand shoulders, lots of ability to get sustained damage across the wave and uh, be able to affect your jungle matchup. As it stands right now, though, Lurox going into the enemy jungle. Looking Ooh, slide away. Can definitely make that one happen, but Maxwell quick with the smite finger gets his way out of there. We'll have a Q shortly. Actually, with the red buff, can maybe start trading this one back. Over comes Ruby first, though, and with a reset coming through from Jizuki, I think Maxwell just might have to give up no. these wraps. It'd be very dangerous to try and contest. Well, what Jizuke has done is he's used his HP as a resource, and uh, Antonio might be using a lot more of his HP. I was wondering what was going to happen there. Maxwell losing the smite fight on that second one, but didn't have the smite. He's got the red buff. Now he's stuck into this play. Does have flash. We'll have a queue up shortly, and may need to break his way out of his own vault. Uh, waiting to try and get his way out. Gets over the wall and Ruby debating, shifting forwards. Forced a flash out of Max Law. The pressure early on from this mid jungle from Unicorns continues to be so yeah. devastating for opponents. Bit of a disconnect from Giants mid jungle. Max Law not going to get punished on this second one. He's going to lose, of course, most of those Raptors down into uh, his own camp. But you can see with. Shizuke, not a, able to push in the wave, but not able to fight. Ends up getting very dangerous for Maxwell, and now they don't have enough HP to finish their own Krug camp. So, slight, slim victory over the Unicorn's Love Sex Edition as they uh, slim down Maxwell's HP bar, force him away from his jungle camps. Indeed, they do. Time to see what more they can do. Actually, Winsome and Shiganari are going to be heading back to lane, having just gone for a bit of a trek into their own jungle. Uh, nothing else that's gone on so far, but we do need to see how much the early tracking of Max Law comes back to haunt him. Uh, actually, I can see there still seems like the Raptors are up, and I wonder whether that's because I don't think they should have respawned quite yet. So, actually, it's no, 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 no. it in. would have been counter jungle, yeah. isn't it? That thought never disappeared off the mini map. So, Laura's doing a successful counter jungle, mm -hmm. walking towards top, has full, and this is exact. this is the second part of this play. You push yeah. into the enemy jungle, force them off the camps, get vision control. You control one side of the map. You know you're safe from the other one, your time catches. Still a little too hard to kill. And of course, the Sidrani don't bring a flash to the lane. It's a dead Antonio. Right. Does look like it. Antonio has got himself in a dangerous position and falls down for first blood to Lurox. He makes an invade. He returns towards the top side and immediately gets himself on the board. And you give a, you give the assist gold over to the Renekton, who hadn't reset yet, so they get to use that entirety of that kill gold to go towards their shopping trip. So, Antonio. 
had no teleport in that top side, and now you're actually in a very difficult scenario as the Antonio, because Renekton gets the teleport back to lane, and you, they get to control that wave however they want to. They can slow push this wave back if they want. They can shove it in very quickly. I think, actually, we have a look towards what's happening in that top lane minion wave. You can see that Maxor has been called up there. Really interested in what's happening. And as you can see, Scarface not pushing that wave in. It's actually going to be freezing here. The Antonio is going to have to have either have some help pushing this out or expect a uh, quick return back to that top side from Lurox to punish the Sidrani even more. Absolutely. And Scarface with that pickaxe can be very threatening, especially with the level advantage. Usually empower W to get big stun, but overcome. You have to call your jungle support up here. You have to yeah. do this. It's, it's difficult from Giants because it is just the case of that kill coming in in a very good time for the Unicorns. Maxwell has to be here. The question is, I'm interested in what Unicorns oh, wow. can do, because Scarface, he understands he's level 6. He can just bully out this wave, and the Giants don't even get to crash the wave. This is disastrous for the top side of the map. The lane-dominant champion of Renekton gets to run over the entire top side. It has been something of a problem for Giants. The Antonia has been a point of attack for enemy teams, and it's been... A really frustrating few minutes for the Sejuani player who finally get the wave crash, but you see huge discrepancy in CS right now. Scarface well, played this out so well. Not got the range. So you need four minions to get a permanent freeze in a lane, um, which is, of course, not what's going to be there. But even now, it's going to be a slow push back towards the other side. Where Scarface can start building up this wave. You've already got Lurox. He's taken that dragon. Expect Lurox to go towards top side at some point and once again force Antonio into a really bad position. And this is the higher level understanding you see from our top level ERL team. They understand how to take one mistake, that death in top side, and turn it into just this huge burden which one side of the map has to bear from the other side. Lurox isn't even going to go towards top side, going to trust Scarface to do his own thing and run over the bot side instead, spread the love around the map. That's indeed, decent knock up there from Mad VN, but not too much more to be found for now. Um, and you know, this is a team, Unicorns, that found an absolutely devastating beatdown that was potentially too graphic to stream in some ways on the poor old <laughs> Jess Glazeri just the other day. And they are so capable of taking a lane and making it unplayable. The last game, it was, it was against, of course, that Zeri. This yeah, time, actually this found a good size. timing here. Maybe yeah, Maxwell's found a good timing, but doesn't have all six. Do they have enough to take him down? There's still no Dominus. Forces a flash out of Scarface to avoid that Glacial Prison. Well done to burn the additional summon. Oh. The moment I start praising the top side, it does end up being punished. Yeah, but, but it's a flash away from the ultimate of the Antonio. That's one playmaking tool which has gone away from at this point. Scarface looks at that duo now and goes, okay, what do you, ne what do, you do next? Mm. You still have control over this top side. I am incredibly impressed with how the Unicorns have taken that single mistake and turned it into just this overwhelming advantage which now affects the entire map. The amount of time which Maxwell spent towards the top side means that he's not there to help out the other side of the map. He's not there to farm so many of his own camps. Ruby can start getting involved too. And now Antonio, Back. with no ult, of course you don't bring a... Uh, Flash is the Sejuani either, is in serious danger on top side. Dominus is back available too. Maxwell doesn't have the ultimate yet as well. He's trying to clear the wave to get a hold of it. Finally has that option to try and seize and desist onto them, onto Ruby. But already the Sejuani falls and they can't get the kill back. It's a complete disaster. Unicorns get away with murder quite literally twice. Oh, and Scarface and Lorox off of a single Badly timed kill and from the Antonio who dies at just the worst possible time. It turns into a backbreaking advantage on the map. The exhaust onto Kazooie means that even as he hops in, he cannot secure the kill. The turnaround potentially from Shiganari heals right back up with a Severum empowered Moonlight Vigil. Now, um, I have things to help me remember the name of Fellow Assault. Oh, that one was my. It's, it's like a Vladimir ult uh -huh. for the Fellow, so I call I it the Emo Play. Uh, heals Dude. back up from that. Now, I wish they had that in the top side, the Giants. Um, don't have the ability to survive through this one. It gets close for Ruby, but even oh. if you do get that kill, even if you get that kill, it is still a losing play. You have lost so much around this top side. It is astounding, the the, um, the amount of advantage that Unicorns have managed to get through, again, just this one mistake. And now Giants are at least going to get themselves a neutral objective. But they are staring down a 3,000 gold lead at nine and a half minutes in. That is an incredibly hard deficit to come back from, especially when you really would have wanted to be in a lead yourself. You have a Vi and an Ari. You needed to be playing through that, but because Maxlaw was pulled away from that lane, not, not able to twin up with Jizuke, mm. 
Giants, even with their main playmaking options, haven't been able to find advantages. And find a chink in the armor in the top lane. They pry it open into this lead. And you know, Jizuke, we asked him to get out of lane to make an impact in the side lane, has been stuck in lane this entire game, whereas Ruby already out on the map. We've seen what Lurox has been doing. Uh, already, you know, involved with everything the Unicorns have managed to achieve thus far. Scarface as well now. So far ahead, it feels like the Antonio is going to really struggle to lane properly. And then, you know, passively on the other side, Shiganari up about 10, 15 CS by himself. Got that Gale Force nice and early. Yeah, and you're looking over at Giants and you think, okay, well, maybe the Tristana can do something if you get enough uh, time, in, time and items. But even Tristana will be struggling against the Unicorns. You don't want to jump in on top of the target when that target is an Azir who gets to shot you somewhere, is a Renekton who has this much gold. It's going to be a very difficult game for Dryas to try and problem solve. And I don't think they can win this through pure 5v5. I think that would be very difficult to do so, but they are trying to do so on the top side. But it's going to be 3v2 and Antonio's out of mana. And HP to boot, he dies another time, and Lurox gets that kill. 2-0-2 now on the Troll King, stamping down his authority on the top side of this map. Ah, uh, Lurox and Ruby getting involved. Yuzuke has a flash, but no ultimate. Probably going to be forced to use it. The tower shot threatens okay. Lurox right. away. But, uh, That's already how much damage is going to come in, otherwise. Hang on, wait. We don't have first items yet. You're fine. It doesn't have to blow out that flash, and... Uh, which is okay, at least able to teleport back into the mid lane. But once again, it's a losing play from Giants. Can't actually remember the last real winning play that they had. They've had some even ones, I suppose. I think of the 2v2 in bot side where they at least blew a summon of their troubles. But Giants, even away from uh, the group top fights, they haven't had a group top fight yet. Um, they have not really found a way to get on the board and leverage their champions' advantages. No, they have not. And now with the dragon spawning, Unicorns of Love are straight onto it. And Giants are thinking about contesting, but the last few times has not been clean. This Everybody's might be the break. Just been spotted, in they go. On to Winston, Dragon's gone down, and now the fight commences. They're on to that Tom Kench, who devours away the Avelios, who's Shiganari so low, though. And actually, they're going to get one back on the other side. The Antonio died in the 1v1. Ruby. Maxwell, he throws escape because Ruby and Lurox in a 2v4 are going to run everyone down regardless. They get another kill, and Jizuke is trading on out best he can. At the end, does escape on a sliver of HP. But it is three for two, plus the dragon in favor of the Unicorns of Love. Well, what happens on the top side is I, I believe Antonio just How dies at the 1v1. Scarface wasn't there in the fights to make things very uneven. That's why the fight goes a little more even. Kedui can actually get some damage off there, can jump in because there's no Renekton ready and waiting to put in a power W and just one shot them straight out. Doesn't happen, so they find some advantage. It's not going to be an even trade, though. As I said, there was another kill going over on the other side of the map to suit the Unicorns, and they get the Dragons to boot. It looks like it is just an extended laning trade. You see that Antonio trying to play around those W2s, and as soon as that Q misses, things get dangerous. You kind of run out of damage at this point, right? You're trying to keep fishing with these Ws, but Renekton has an empowered uh, ability as soon as he pops that ultimate, gets enough of it down, and once again, Zirani, uh, no flash, not able to escape those kind of plays. Meek are cold in the top side. Well, in this one, the fact that you lose both your bot laners and in a 2v4, Unicorns of Love prove it's still an even fight and the Halo Shipmaster will be damn proud. <laughs> Giant ship staggered line. Um, <laughs> well, Giants uh, just a bit able to have their mid laner escape on the bot side. You can see that while Jizuke was answering the bot lane turret. I believe there were some rifle turrets put down. The Calibre and Crescendum combo from Shiganari. Uh, able to force away Jizuke from that tower at very low HP. And of course, with the Crescendum, you're very good at killing towers. So that will be a uh, another structure. And also, of course, the first tower, fifth plate going down to Shikanari. Lots of gold, opening up that gold lead for the Aphelios, which uh, wasn't there beforehand, actually. You know, Shikanari was just about even with Kedri after that fight, because Kedri ended up getting that kill. Right? To open up a healthy advantage to join the rest of his team after that. We've got three plates in the top side, two in the mid. Unicorns of Love have run this whole early game, and you can see their ice completions are there healthily in time. Let's see whether they can continue to leverage the advantage they have built themselves early on into the game. Mm. And honestly, in this early game, it's only been 14 minutes, but you can see some of the real class coming out of the mm. They are at a significant advantage. Oh! As I say that, Ruby's gonna die. At the moment you say the class act, Ruby just about survives the ignite, surely oh. takes him down! Advian gets the kill. And on the top side, Scarface looking to punish the temerity of the mid lane. 
play. Antonio gets some damage back, but it's just not enough. The Glacial Prison is immediately broken out of, and that's living up to his namesake. You do not escape this Renekton, who gets the solo kill again alongside the tower. Takes a lot to take Ruby down, but they do get the kill. Unicorns losing a kill in isolation, but you can already see there are... Well, Jazuke might have to blow the flash here. Lots of damage coming from Lurox. Charm there. Starts to try to trade this one out. He gets the subjugate down. Add the end here. Maybe trying to turn it around, but the teleport coming back as Max walks around as well. But with that teleport coming through, they don't feel comfortable enough anymore. But Ruby and Lurox still thinking about this. Just be some shoulders hitting forward. You can see I got Empress to buy that. Think about this. Oh, yeah. Meta Ludens as well. That Q it. hits from those uh, Conquering Sands, and mm. maybe something happens after that. But Shiganari, Winsome, able to get in towards this mid lane, and Unicorns, even though they lose out on that mid lane kerfuffle um, in terms of the kill, they come back, get the tower, and it's a winning trade for them again. And Unicorns, again, just seemingly, even when Giants have themselves an angle, coming out ahead. Unicorns were so far ahead of their regional competition. And uh, after beating Vitality B in their first game of the Amazon EU Masters uh, main stage, this would be such an important game for them to just say, yeah, you know what? We're a first seed. We are the, going to be the first seed in this group. Let's yeah. stamp our authority down to come away with a 2-0 from the first two games, especially against the level of competition which they'd be doing against. It would be very important for the Prime League first seed. Put some respect on the name is the statement right now. They are taken down Vitality B. They're looking to take down Giants as well here and prove that not only are they the first seed uh, in terms of their group, potentially potential uh, championship caliber team, a team that could look to really push deep in playoffs if they keep playing like this. And while the rest of the Prime League has been struggling in the other groups, Unicorns of Love have been doing nothing of the sort. <laughs> and, uh... It was Lurix on the interview the other day who was effectively saying that, you know, we think that we are above the level of the other teams in the same way that the LFL teams have been considered a level above the competition. They want to put their name in the hat there, and you can see in this game today that uh, they are starting to show a lot of the skill sets which fall in line with that. Um, of course, coming out onto this game now, Unicorn's going to get themselves what seems to be a very early soul point. They're controlling the side lanes. Giants are going to take themselves an objective bounty up in top side, but they're doing it at the cost of a cloud soul point. Shimada has been talking a lot about this, and you know what? I'm actually going to join ranks. No, you can't cloud join. Souls. You sell Medrise. You can't sell no, cloud souls as well. I, I, well, it turns out Medrise has a move speed component too. Is that what's got cloud soul. <laughs> What happened was, there was a patch change where if you get multiple dragons now from the Cloud Soul, when you get a lot of slow resist, a lot of out of combat move speed, and then also a ridiculous amount of move speed from the Cloud Soul, it's actually really obnoxious to play against. So, um, Unicorns managing to pick themselves up three dragons uncontested so far. And if you are sat there as a poor little Kedui, uh, an Antonio running down, uh, being ran down by a Renekton, move speed actually becomes quite important because it means that you can or can't make it away from them in those extended trades. And Unicorns, either way, just putting the pressure on Giants and saying, you have to contest it with this next dragon. Otherwise, bad things will happen to you. Yeah, and I feel like the Antonio might need to replace the three in his name to a five, because he's zero, five, and zero thus far Ooh. in this game. And <laughs> it's been a rough one. He's down 50 CS. He's down 3.1 thousand gold. And yes, there's some issues with where the lane state ended up, but we had some concerns about how this player could be exploitable. And Unicorns mm. of Love have absolutely leveraged that. They did similar things to Jessica, as we were saying. It's been a return just on the other side of the map. I have to wonder, what earth do you do as a Sejuani in this situation? Just hope your R lands, I guess. A uh, cry, mainly. <laughs> you just sit there. You sit there and go, I need help fixing my wave. And they did try. And Scarface was like, no, I'm going to break the wave again. And they couldn't quite do it. I mean, again, real credit to Unicorns running away from one opportunistic kill and putting Giants into a very difficult scenario. Shiganari in a difficult situation, but Winston nearby. So okay, went looking. He did actually land the Chan onto Winston, but the time catch not the easiest target to chunk out. Instead, that is now the ultimate burned by Jazuke in an opportunistic look for picks. And now Scarface debating a 1v4 here. Could definitely go by looking in. The Buster shot will force him away, but he just slices right back in. Could look for a dice afterwards, but will not decide to go for it. And instead, yeah. just get a couple ultimates and back away. Well, he didn't end up hitting an enemy champion there, so we didn't have the extra ability to get the second part of the dice off, just did it over the wall. No um, dice. So uh, no dice, no dice. <laughs> no dice on that one, but definitely a lot of damage should he want to do that. Jazuke, no ult now, cost that in the top side. It's 2v3 briefly on the bot side. Teleport's begun to be tra tra channeled. I find the right word eventually as the shuffle comes through. Maxtor trapped between a rock and a load of soldiers. He goes over the wall, but that will be his tomb. Kedui will get in the way out of danger by hopping over the wall. 
Giants here, and another kill comes straight into the hands of Unicorns of Love, and whatever Giants try to do to punish Unicorns, it just never works out. The, the response is rapid as it is brutal. Yeah. It's a rock and a sand place in this one, and Unicorns now, after they've just blown all of these offensive abilities, Here we go again. walk up to this mid turret. Teleport's coming in, but what the Giants have to fight with, they've got a couple of ultimates. Zuko's got a flank. Got to try and find an Abbey. does not land the ground. Yeah, just to get the charm around. And actually, that's a fantastic use of the ultimate. Winsome saves them with the Glacier Prison. Abbey down to solo HP. Ruby has got the soldiers set up. The army has arrived. It's reinforced. But Jazuke gets nowhere to oh, go. Ludens. Ludens prop brings him down. Slides and glides. Try and find another one, but will not do it. And two attempts in a row fall flat on its face. And Unicorns of Love will not be stopped. That is so brutal. Giants seeing enemies limp away with single digit, maybe just double digit HP and not getting anything more to see out of it. They tried to punish unicorns in their ingre ingress into their bot side jungle. Didn't manage to capitalize on the momentary 2v3 when you just had Lorax and Ruby on that bot side. Then when unicorns push in towards that mid lane in a turret, Jazuke, who's been trying so hard to impact the game, just can't. Gets a four mana Everfrost, but it's not enough, even with the tower shots involved at that point. Winsome comes to the rescue. Uh, X Cloud 9 support coming in and uh, spiriting away his carries. And Giants, you have to feel for them. This is actually a fairly well played play. Look at this multi man route. Ruby not in a position to do damage at this point, but the turnaround damage from Siganari makes it very, very difficult. And the Ludens prop towards the end of this. Lu uh, Ruby just comes in. Oh. Black. Down. I dub this moment Unicorns of Love, mid lane is magic. <laughs> we were wondering the other day yeah. whether Unicorns. Is, is there like. I, obviously, like, there is the, the famed turn of bronies. I'm not sure if there's a specific one for, like, the Unicorns fan club, but yes, if they did ever want to make, make a cartoon by the name of Unicorns <laughs> of Love, mid lane is magic. <laughs> Ruby will make a wonderful what you think about that. This guy is if so anyone wants to draw any storyboards of this, I mean, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't see it. <laughs> I think I might have to apologize to the organization for that. But either way... What are you talking about? <laughs> either way, uh, our deranged ramblings have led to some unusual situations, as we've said. But right now, it um, is also led to an 8,000 gold lead 22 minutes in. There's a Cloud Soul available, and no real way for Giants to even consider contesting Lee Blue all of those abilities to teleport in as flank options over the last two fights. It was already kind of desperation at that point. It's feeling all but over for the weep. All, all over but for the weeping. There we go. That's the way that phrase yeah. is supposed um, to work. The other way out of this is an Elder Flip. Cloud Soul goes over to Unicorns. And as I said, actually in a completely non memeing way, Cloud Soul is actually really broken nowadays. Particularly Cloud Soul being uh, introduced. Look how quick these members are. They just run at the Antonio. And uh, chain out three to a six, I suppose. Throws out the ult, but there's not. It's. Uh, Sad situation, Sam. Yes, Sad it situation. is a sick death for the Antonio, who has not had his best game, struggling in this one. And on the other side, that Renekton is nothing short of beastly. Yeah. Um, oh no, he's, he's on a recall on a ward. He's on the ward. Not in the best place right now. Has to pop the ult. No E, they've left oh, him out to dry. Can he get that? Can't oh, get close no. enough. Lurox gets it. The quickness is down, and so is the Rakan. And now, with only a control ward in the back of the pit, and Jizuke desperately trying to shove out away, but over they come to try and stop him. Ruby gets charmed out of his shuffle, potentially, but a de uh, an abyssal dive will bring Winston closer, and Jizuke is just like, I will try and execute and shove in as much wave as I can. I'm not gonna lie, I would have just headed towards the Baron. Like, as much as he could kill the Ari, you could have just taken Baron for free at that point, I feel like. Uh, either way, Jizuke goes down, and they're gonna return to either. They find themselves that timing window, no Ari to support the play. Avian is back out on the map. Giants, I don't think you can give over this one for free. I think if you can give over a Baron, it's pretty much lights out. See if they can actually get close to the pit though. Maxwell spotted on the Spryer's Spry Bloom. And Unicorns look very much in position to block him out. Doing what they can here to turn this one around. He is so close to being able to get in. The shuffle away though means there's no way for Maxwell to get close enough to pit down to 2000 HP. Oof. And then warded off by Scarface, who deletes at the end again. You want to know how I got these scars? It was a Relax and W! Powered one! Call the meat. Slices through Advian. And this is Advian's, like, this. If, if he has a villain origin story, we're just giving him a free one at that point. As, 
God, it's got to be so frustrating playing this kind of game. Shut out from so early on. And Unicorns, they are just continuing to go from strength to strength in a huge gold advantage, nearing enough 10,000 gold. Lurox running down. Antonio has himself his own armor shred if he wants to with that subjugate. And Antonio oh, has to no. the ult again. And this, this, this Sejuani just cannot impact the game. It's been a real disaster from the moment that wave state got screwed over. But for the moment, Lurox gets the invade and turn ganking topside. And now it really is just Unicorns of Love winning every engagement and being able to pull off players like this. I apologize for my earlier statements. It's a ruthless predator in Culver Meek and just nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, one thing I did like there is that so sometimes you see there used to be a trend of like flaming renectants for popping the ult too early because you're wasting the damage. You actually just pop your ult to get that empowered ability coming up. Also in the Baron, pressing your R means you get like two empowered abilities when you have your full rage bar. Half of it is one empowered ability. Has it to just tear through the first poor unfortunate soul that walks up to him and uh, it just so happened to be Avian sent to the depths at that point, one and two. And Avian in another game could have been the game winning player that could get these big engages. He's looking for it now, but you just don't have that margin of error. Can't find the target. So fast, Lurok just gets to walk away from the grand entrance. Cloud Soul proving its worth. Now Winston, spending it. They do land the ultimate then. I'm gonna try and turn this around. Charm onto the Tom Cage, knock him up. Trying to knock him down though is another match with Winston Black oh. now. And the turnaround damage is utterly obscene. Shiganari and Ruby combined to delete four members and only the Antonio survived, who was not there to begin with. Lands the Glacial Prison onto the Tom Cage, who walks it off. And just like that, the Unicorns prove the sexiest thing they can do is win the game and remain undefeated here in their group. Where did they go? Now you see them, now you don't. Unicorns leaving nothing up for debate. Crushing their competition and going 2-0. What a game it was. What a statement it was. USC are here to play.